Okay, it's 5.30. Uh, let's start the meeting. Uh, roll call. Uh, let the record show that Alderperson Donahue is excused. Uh, call the meeting to order. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Uh, next, uh, triple, triple black. Carol, you're pretty pretty well familiar with city staff. Do you want me to inter us to introduce ourselves? Um, no, I think we're good. All right. Uh, 2.1 is approval of the minutes from the October 12, 2020 meeting. I'll I'll enter in, entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes from October 12th. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Vice Chair votes aye. Motion carries. Next, we have uh, items for discussion only. 3.1, the sale of $11,435,000 taxable general obligation refunding bond seri series 2020 D. Carol? Okay, hey, thank you. All right, now I'm going to uh, try to share my report with you and uh, move through this information. So we'll see if, uh, if I can make it happen. <laughs> so, all right, so I'm going to start with uh, the first page of my report. And at the top, it does start with the 11435 taxable geo bonds. And the next line says the new issue size. Uh, when we adopted the preliminary resolutions, it did say an approximate amount. Uh, the issue size will change depending on the interest rate and the fact that we are borrowing to provide for certain interest payments. Carol, so can Carol, this, can you in this case the Car final Carol, note, can you pause? Can you pause for a second? I just want to make sure. Can any of the alders remotely see the uh, presentation? No. No, we can't. Okay. Just give us one second and we'll see if we can't get that corrected. Okay. Carol, did you click on share your screen? Um, okay, I have share my screen. Now it, it's getting closer. Right. Okay. <laughs> Come up now. In council chambers, we can see it and online. Looks good. Okay, right. now we've got now we've got it. Oh, perfect. Okay, thank you. Okay, so my next observation is: Can you make the printing larger? It does not fill up the whole screen. Oh boy. Uh, let's see if I can. Marty, any hints for me? <laughs> um, it looks I mean, it's a little better. Berta, you, you should be able to, on the right-hand side, uh, there should be a little plus and minus symbol. If you press the plus symbol, you can um, make it bigger, or the top of your screen. Got it. On your end. I got it. Thank you. Okay, Carol, I'm good. Oh, good. Thank you. Thanks for the help. <laughs> All right. Okay, so... I'm going to um, start with the fact that the issue size is now $11,510,000. And that issue size fluctuates depending on the actual interest rate that we receive today. Uh, because part of this borrowing is for interest payments that will be paid out on the refunding bonds between 22 uh, 23 and 24. So uh, with that, I'm just going to go into the background of the issue and then come forward with how we got to uh, the issue size and the interest rate. Now, as the background, we're going back to 2018. 
where the city issued the NANS, that was in the amount of $10,490,000. This was to fund a portion of TID 18 business park development. That was the eligible piece for the tax exempt financing. There were also uh, uh, long-term financing uh, structured out for some of the uh, taxable purposes in 2018. Uh, the NANs are a short-term form of construction financing. They're basically used to fund a project before a revenue stream is available to support the long-term debt. They're not a general obligation of the city. However, the city does have to reserve general obligation debt capacity for the refinancing because the refinancing would be general obligation. The other thing about a NAN is because it's not GO, the city cannot levy for principal or interest payments. And therefore, the NANs were sized, as I mentioned, for the project for issuance expenses and some capitalized interest for 18 and 19. It was the intention to refinance them with 20 year general obligation refunding bonds at the time a revenue stream would become available. And I'm showing you there is the payment schedule, uh, which is the uh, payments from June 1st of 2021 through tw June 1st of 2023 when the principal comes due. Okay, in the meantime, there's only interest payments to be paid. Now, due to the pandemic, economic development has slowed in TID 18 during 2020 and increment is currently not available nor able to be project projected with certainty at this time. So although the city does anticipate that general obligation debt incurred for this development to be supported by revenue generated in TID 18, uh, the, the NANs themselves have a prepayment feature starting June 1st of 2021. So we can use a special form of refinancing called advanced refunding that allows the city to refinance the NANS prior to that prepayment date, but we can only do that using taxable general obligation refunding bonds. Proceeds of these bonds will purchase U.S. Treasury obligations known as slugs, and they will be placed with an escrow agent. And that the slugs will pay off the principal of that $10,490,000 and the June 1 interest payment of that $190,131 on June 1st. Now, moving forward, on September 14, I'm sorry, a report was presented to finance and personnel regarding advanced refunding the NANS with a taxable GEO refunding bond. The historically low interest rate offered an opportunity to lock in 20 year financing. So the projected true interest cost was at my report in September, a 1.93%. And again, the bonds would provide funding for the purchase of the slugs, the issuance expenses and capitalized interest for 2022 through 2024. So as general obligation debt, the tax levy will provide the security for these payments, but as <coughs> increment becomes available, it will be used to offset the levy. So we prepared for the market as we do for all issues. We coordinated with quarrels for your legal documents. We prepared and distributed an official statement and a notice of sale. And we also went through the bond rating application process. The result is Moody's did reaffirm a double A2 bond rating, and there is a report attached. It's a credit report, but when we do a financing without a new uh, updated uh, uh, audit, which of course there would be no update to, to the 2019 audit, they give us what's called a press release. So it's a very shortened version of a credit report. That is included herein. The bids received this morning, we received three bids and they're listed there. And the successful winning bidder came in at a 2.15%. So as you will notice, the 2.15% is higher than the 1.93 back in September. And we have been monitoring uh, these interest rates. And today when the bids came in at a 2.15%, 
Uh, we did a lot of market research to provide to the city for uh, making the uh, award tonight, and that includes uh, the information I've provided in this report on market, which shows that the municipal bond market has experienced a very heavy volume of taxable municipal security, securities both last week and is scheduled to also have that same volume this week. So when you have that much volume hitting the marketplace and again generated by a lot of interest due to low interest rates, it starts to put pressure on those rates because there's a lot of volume in the market and so in order to attract the investor, uh, interest rates start to, to rise. So uh, that's one of the uh, main reasons why the interest rate rose. And when the interest rate rose, that also, of course, raises the interest on the capped interest. So that's why the issue size went from 11435000 to the $11,510,000, okay, driven by the, by the capped interest. The other thing is that this morning there was volatility occurring uh, first of all, there were 41 sales today alone in the marketplace. Um, there was volatility. Is it related to possibility or not of a stimulus bill? And also articles were popping up right about that same time as your sale about in, in certain people's views, they might be seeing some uh, experience uh, with uh, election jitters, which is very common. I can't tell you for sure if the election jitters are coming into play here. That's the first time I've seen that uh, reference uh, in our in our um, publications, but uh, uh, definitely the volume is record uh, volume of taxables both last week and this week. So that makes sense. Uh, the more supply you have, the pressure on on the rate. So therefore, looking at a 215 and 20 year bond at uh, a taxable rate. You know, of course, we would love to have hit uh, the 193, uh, but with that, you can see through the tight bidding, the three rates we did receive was very tight. And also, I took a look back in 2018 when we went through, uh, the city did do a 20-year bond, a taxable bond, and the true interest cost at that time in 2018 was 4.19%. So just for market comparison, I took the rates from that issue back in 2018 and I applied it to this issue. And you'll see that the um, difference in the principal amount would have been $12,360,000 instead of the eleven million five ten. And the additional debt service when compared to this issue at a 215 would have been about another $4.1 million. So that kind of helps put in per, into perspective the fact that even though we're not at the 193, the 215 now at for 20 year bonds compared to 215, uh, or I'm sorry, a 419 back in 2018, I think can still give us some comfort in knowing that we're still hitting a uh, very, very good time for locking in the 20 year rate. The council action on the final award resolution, which has been prepared in the final dollar amount, will lock in the principal amounts and interest rates. It will award the bonds to the winning bidder, Piper Sandler. It appoints associated trust company to act as that escrow agent so that they can um, order the slugs and, and pay for them when the uh, uh, funds are delivered, which goes into the next section on closing and delivery of funds. November 16th is the closing. The money will be distributed, number one, to the escrow agent to pay for the slug. The 659000 comes to the city and is deposited to pay capitalized interest. And you'll see that on the schedule that's below, you see the column. Um, if you go all the way to the right-hand side of the page and then go to the column that, that, that says capitalized interest, you'll see three years there that totals that 656000 And then there's some little excess proceeds that goes on top of that so that all of that will come to the city. And the expenses of issuance will be paid by the winning bidder. And so I listed those by the underwriter, municipal advisor, bond council, rating, and escrow agent. 
So that's the retirement schedule. You'll see principal starts in the year 2025 because you have capped interest in those first uh, three years. And then we have an interest only payment in 24. And that's where we're hoping that by that time we'll see a sufficient increment generated uh, to start covering some of that debt service. And then we have the final year in 2040, which is the longest that we can go out for 20 year bonds. And then I am showing you a tip number 18 cash flow, which this cash flow shows you the first column on the left, all of the issues outstanding. There's three issues outstanding uh, debt service for TID 18. Now this, with including this issue, that is the final debt service for all issues. And then moving over to the right, we have the capitalized interest that has been borrowed for all of those issues combined. And then we have the updated projected tax increment. So this is a column that was um, the city had updated prior to doing the financing. And again, it's everyone's you know best estimate and trying to project what development may reasonably occur. And then we have the balance column in terms of what is covered and what is not covered uh, by these projected increments. The bottom part of the schedule is the final pricing, which shows you that as a taxable, the columns of coupon and yield, which is the yield column is the market. And in this case, the coupon column is the same. And that's because a taxable is frequently bought at a as a discount bond. And that's what happened here. The underwriter just discounted these, which means he keeps the 176,311 and he pays all the expenses with them. And then the purchase price is what goes back to the city. And the discount is taken into consideration in the true interest cost or rate that's on the very last line. The next page is the what's called the Moody's uh, press release. Instead of a full-fledged credit report, uh, Moody's issues a press release at this time. And so what it does is very short. It just has a uh, statement that Moody's has assigned the AA2. And it also uh, reaffirms the AA2 rating on all of your outstanding general obligation debt. And the rating rationale uh, is, is basically the same line that's taken out of your, your uh, complete credit report where it says it reflects the city's strong financial position, moderate debt and pension burdens, and solid tax base with below average resident income levels. And then your credit report would have a paragraph that discusses each of those. The coronavirus uh, paragraph is something that they're putting in um, everybody's uh, credit report, but it's nice to see that they also say we do not see any material in impact, any material immediate credit risk for Sheboygan. Um, the rating outlook and factors that could lead to a rating uh, up or down are the same as they have been in prior reports. <clears throat> Excuse me. It does list the legal security as general obligation. The proceeds indicates what the money will be used for, a uh, basic um, uh, profile of the city, and then it gets into some Moody's uh, disclaimers. So those are all pages of disclaimers. And then we have the final award resolution. And as you'll see, it starts with the title in the dollar amount of 11510000 It has a number of whereases, which is basically reciting history, saying the same thing of what the city did back in 2018. The city did adopt a set sale resolution saying that we were going to move forward to do a refunding and take this. Uh, we did a notice of sale that was distributed telling underwriters how to place their bid. And then we get into the, uh, um, <coughs> excuse me, the fact that I'm just going to back up here, that the city, um, second we're at from the bottom, um, saying that there was a notice of sale that is now an exhibit attached to this resolution, um, and that we also 
did publish in different uh, industry publications and I put the sale on calendars. Uh, the next page has the fact that we received bids and exhibit B will be the bid tabulation that you've seen in my report. Uh, and then it goes into uh, the fact that uh, you received a bid from the winning bidder and they're calling that the proposal, which is also attached as exhibit C. So these attachments is what makes the difference between your draft resolution that you may have seen to this final award resolution is the attachment of those, as well as of course the increase to the issue size. So the rest of the resolution, I don't ever like to call resolutions a boilerplate document, but uh, I will say that it's prepared in a format exactly the way every sale, general obligation sale document is prepared in terms of um, authorizing the issuance, uh, the terms of the bonds, when they're payable, principal and interest, call features, uh, there's a tax levy uh, associated. But as I mentioned, as increment is available, you are able to offset the tax levy, as well as there is a tax levy for the 21 payments, which you will not have to levy for because you will have the capitalized interest to offset that. So, so all of this is standard general obligation language. Um, the fact that you will have a debt service fund, the fact that you will use the um, money for uh, escrowing to buy those securities to take care of those NANs. Um, section, I'm just kind of scrolling through here. Um, approving of the official statement that went out, uh, that was reviewed by uh, city administration, uh, pro providing undertaking to uh, continue disclosure in the marketplace, and we do take care of that for you. And here's the assignment of the uh, escrow agent. So that will take care of the slugs already have been subscribed for, so that's in this resolution. So the resolution itself ends on page nine. That's the body of the resolution. Everything else is an exhibit. And so exhibit, as I mentioned, exhibit A, I'm gonna scroll through this very quickly. That's your notice of sale. That document itself goes on for right there for five pages. And then there's another exhibit, which is the bid tab. You have seen that, okay? And that exhibit is the winning bid. And this is something you haven't seen, but this is the bid form. So it consists of two pages. It is signed by the winning bidder and does make reference to the change at the bottom because they obviously bid on it as 11435 So that's how they're, they're the basis of the award. And then we communicate with him to uh, uh, agree to the numbers on the resizing. So that's his bid form. And the pricing summary you have seen already in my report, that's that table. And the debt service schedule you have seen, uh, this is on a semi-annual basis. So that's that schedule. And this is a form of bond. It's just one bond prepared for each principal amount. So this is a template. So that is, I believe, the end of our, that's the end of the, the document. So can I answer any questions? Any questions from the com committee? Yes, this is Bert. Um, would you go back to the page just before the Moody document? Which is a long way back. Yes. <laughs> Sorry about that. Here we go, we didn't get there yet. <laughs> okay, let's You'll go. You'll see the big Moody's logo. Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. I think, is this the page that you're looking no. at? No. Yes. Further up. Moody? Okay. You no. That, you're right. That was it. Right there. Page okay. number four. Okay. 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 Page yes. number four. Yes. The, the final pricing summary. Yes. Um, the coupon, the yield, the maturity value, the price, the dollar price. Yes. Would you would you go through the rationale for that again? Okay. Uh, the purpose of this page is number one. The, the most important starting point is the yield column. Yes. Okay? The yield column is market. 
So okay. as an investor uh, that wants to purchase the bond, uh, he looks to, number one, what is the credit quality? And number two, how long uh, does he want to invest for? Right. So if he wants to invest very short, he'll buy something on the front end there in those, in those first five years. If right. he, you know, as he goes out longer, he gets more yield. So right. back in, um, or mid-September, let's say, when I gave my last report, those yield columns obviously were lower. And so that's where you'll instantly know that there's a difference in the market because um, that is the market. And so as soon as I seen the yields, I knew that, you know, market was up. And so that's when we started the investigation about, okay, what's driving the market up? And then we got all kinds of feedback about the reason the market's up is because of how many billions of dollars of taxables are starting to drive the market up. And those investors uh, that, you know, were in it last week and, and bought their billions of dollars worth, now we have uh, the same uh, level of, sales scheduled in this week. So uh, I did not track the sales that took place this afternoon because uh, we were working out some of the uh, revisions with the winning bidder in terms of the resize. Uh, and uh, it'll, it'll be interesting to see if the sales that occurred in the afternoon uh, experienced more pressure on interest rates and if, if those interest, those yields would have gotten higher throughout the day and will get higher throughout the week as more sales come into the into the market. So do you anticipate that more sales will come into the market? Oh yeah. Definitely. They're on the calendar already. They're on the calendar. They had forty one on the calendar for today alone. Okay. So, so yes, definitely. Definitely. So in this case the, the coupon column is mirroring the yield column, so and that's just uh, the reflection of how a taxable bond is bought. Right. Thank you. Yes. Any other questions? Uh, Carol, I had one. What was that uh, back from 2018? What was that 12 million dollar figure you you gave? I couldn't write it fast enough. Okay, the 12 million dollar figure is right here, and that's 12 million. Kind of, you can see at the bottom here, twelve million three hundred and sixty thousand dollars. That would have okay. been the issue side. Right. Thank. Thank you very much, mm -hmm. uh, Marty. Uh, I don't. I can't speak for the rest of the committee, but I would like a copy of this. Uh, not the whole resolution, just the the winning bidder and the, and the Moody's report. If you could email that out to us tomorrow. Yes, I will. We just couldn't for public record or open meetings laws. We couldn't send it out before this because sure. it wouldn't have met the time frame. I understand. Uh, is there any other questions? Uh, Thomas or Chuck, uh, do we have a, a, a resolution that, uh, I mean, uh, when it comes, when this comes up in the agenda tonight, what will be the revised, the uh, revised language for passage? Or do you want to wait until that comes up and then give it to us? So I think it can be dealt with uh, at tonight's meeting. Um, okay. But it would be a motion to amend, essentially to reflect the changes that Carol just walked you through. Okay. Okay. Any any uh, anything else from anybody on the committee? Okay. Uh, our our next meeting would will be on October twenty sixth, twenty twenty. I'll entertain entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Vice Chair votes aye. aye. We are adjourned. Thank you for your time tonight. Aye.